Hey there, we're going to talk about the different types of reproduction today, um, asexual and sexual reproduction. And we're going to talk just a little bit more about um, DNA and chromosomes. And we're going to take a look at what a karyotype is. We're not going to focus too much on karyotypes, but I did want to go ahead and introduce it because it'll be a big part of our next unit. And it kind of ties in a little bit with what we've been talking about um, with how our DNA um, you know, gets replicated and used for reproduction. Um, so we're going to start off talking about our chromosomes again. Do more complex organisms have more chromosomes than simple organisms? <laughs> no. Right, that is a common misconception. You know, because humans are so large and so complex, we must have more DNA than simple organisms like maybe um, a fly or a banana. That is um, just not true at all. Um, there are two types of chromosomes. The chromosomes that determine the sex of the organism, right? These are called our sex chromosomes, right? Aptly named. So if you are a male, you will have the chromosomes X and Y. If you are a female, you have the chromosomes X, X. Now, when we talk about the sex, right? We're talking about, um, right? What our chromosomes are. So that last set of chromosomes, right? Determine the sex of the organism. The non-sex chromosomes are called autosomal chromosomes, right? These are the chromosomes that do not determine the sex. Um, humans, we have 22 pairs of autosomal um, chromosomes. So let's see if I can't squeeze that in there. 22 pairs. So autosomal chromosomes are going to be the chromosomes that determine height and eye color. You know, and you know, if you have a gene for um, a genetic disorder like cancer or diabetes, right, all of that's going to be on the autosomal chromosomes. That last set, that 23rd pair, is only going to determine the sex of the organism. Um, a useful tool for with chromosomes, right? A photograph of all the chromosomes in a cell is a karyotype. So we can actually um, take a photo and look at all of the chromosomes that an individual has, and we can use that photo or that karyotype to determine if that individual um, maybe has a genetic disorder um, or any number um, of things. You know, we could tell the sex. Um, and we'll talk about more in karyotypes in the next unit. Um, when chromosomes do not separate properly, right, we talked about how in meiosis are homologous chromosomes, right, they have to go through uh, meiosis one and meiosis two. If the chromosomes do not separate properly, we call this non-disjunction. Um, and again, right, normal, meaning a human that has 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes, right, we are not missing or we do not have anything extra. Um, but if non-disjunction occurred, you might be missing or you might have additional chromosomes that could lead to some type of genetic disorder. And we would be able to see this on a karyotype. So that's it for um, our, our chromosomes. And again, we'll talk more about karyotypes in the next unit in case you um, are still confused or just you know, have any questions. So let's take a look at sexual reproduction. So we are going to define sexual reproduction as when two cells, specifically egg and sperm, right, our gametes, join to produce the first cell of a new organism, right? So basically this is fertilization, right? The egg and sperm, they join together, right? Fertilization to form that first cell of a new organism, which we call a zygote. 
So basically, we have to have two parents, right? Uh, female and male for sexual reproduction. Um, some pros to sexual reproduction is definitely going to be genetic variation, right? Mixing up the genes, um, you know, the same male and female, right? They could have a hundred offspring, but because of genetic variation in meiosis, all of their children will be just slightly different. And that increases the odds, right? Increased chance um, of surviving, um, right? If a uh, disease came through, um, you know, or, or maybe they had a genetic disorder, they're, they're less likely to pass that on. Um, and then you also have two parents caring for the young. So that is definitely a pro. Um, a con, right, it, it does require two individuals Right. I, I, I as a female, right, I have to have a male to you know, give me sperm. You have to have a female and a male. Um, and it does take a long amount of time, um, you know, as far as gestational period, whether we're talking about humans or whales or you know, ants, whatever, anything that requires that reproduces um, sexually requires a long amount of time to reproduce um, and you've got to find um, another person to reproduce with you. So a couple of downsides to sexual reproduction. Um, there are two types of sexual reproduction. Um, the first one is internal fertilization, right? This is when fertilization occurs inside the female reproductive organ. Um, so you know, the male has to actually insert the penis into the female. So that's internal, right? That's humans, right? The female would then carry the offspring until it is born. Um, and then of course, the second type is the exact opposite of external fertilization. The male comes by, sprays the egg with sperm, this would be um, organisms like frogs where, or fish, where the female would lay her eggs, you know, somewhere in the water, and then the male would come swim by and fertilize the eggs with his sperm. Um, but it's happening outside the female body. You know, it's happening like in the water or in the environment. So we call that external fertilization. So um, asexual reproduction, we are going to define as when a single parent reproduces by itself. So we have one individual creating offspring. Um, a pro, right, it only requires one parent, right? So I, I wouldn't have to go out and find a partner. Um, it's certainly going to be quicker than sexual reproduction. Because again, I'm not having to look for someone. I don't have a gestational period. Um, a con though is um, low to no genetic variation, right? If I'm constantly creating my own offspring, then those offspring are going to basically be carbon copies of myself. And so all of my babies are not only going to be identical to me, but going to be identical to each other. And so the gene pool is going to be, you know, very low in, you know, genetic variation. So if there's a new disease that comes through, you know, it might wipe out me and all of my offspring because we weren't um, immune or we didn't have any resistance to that um, to that disease. So a couple of pros and cons to asexual reproduction. Um, we're going to look at six types of asexual reproduction. The first one is binary fission. 
Um, this is when the parent cell replicates its DNA and then divides into two cells. This is how bacteria reproduce, right? So a majority of bacteria reproduce through binary fission. Um, and this is how multicellular organisms grow and heal. Um, for us, right, multicellular organisms like humans, we have mitosis, right, where we start with one cell, end up with two daughter cells. So binary fission and mitosis are essentially the same thing, um, except mitosis helps us grow and heal, whereas binary fission is how bacteria actually reproduce, um, you know, to make more offspring. Uh, the second type of asexual reproduction is called budding. Uh, part of the parent pinches off to form offspring. So we have a hydra here, right? And I can see here's the parent and then this little nub, right? Starts to form and it keeps growing until eventually it falls off. And now I have, you know, original parent and new hydra so again, right, that was pretty quick, but the offspring is basically identical to the parent. So we have very little to no genetic variation, but it was pretty quick. Um, regeneration is um, very similar to budding, right? If I think of a sea star, right, I could maybe, like if it loses an arm, um, it could regrow that arm. Um, or that arm could potentially regrow, you know, the rest of it, so it could reproduce. Um, fragmentation, again, very similar um, to regeneration, but you have a fragment of the um, organism left over, and it regenerates. Vegetative reproduction, um, if we think about, um, was it strawberry plants, right? That's asexual reproduction, where they just keep sending out vine after vine, you know, throughout, um, you know, al along the, the branch or wherever, um, that entire row of strawberry vine is all one organism, but it is technically reproduced because every new bud, right, is a strawberry. And then the last type of asexual reproduction, cloning, right, or making an identical copy of uh, the parent. So that's it for our notes on sexual and asexual reproduction with a quick uh, kind of recap of our chromosomes. If you have any questions or concerns about these notes, please make sure to let me know. Thanks.